Hello everybody and welcome back to Purbeck. So we're now into May. We have uh, rested. It's rained quite a bit overnight. So the crops have had a good water. Well, the, the seeds have. They've germinated. And as you can see, we've got the start of our lovely corn crop, which is going to be harvested with the forage harvester for some maize silage. This is not our only field. We do have another field uh, over there, if you missed the episode. So uh, yeah, I think actually every single field will have now germinated. There's no reason why uh, they won't have done. But I think now as we're in a sort of uh, quiet period, as we wait for the crops to grow, we should really do a bit of mowing because then we can make some money. We can also create a stockpile of food for the cows. Yeah, let's just check this field over here. That one's growing, that's good to see. I think it's a wheat crop. Yeah, it's a wheat crop. Um, so, these will need to be fertilised, but there's no rush. We are playing with seasonal growth, so that'll be ready in a few months' time. We'll probably fertilise in June. We, we need to make money first, basically. We don't have that much. And this is the maize crop over here. So let's get the John Deere, and we'll put the mower on the back. As soon as we have the money as well, we'll buy a front mower for it to make things even faster. But yeah, we've just got to make do with what we've got. We actually do have quite a lot of machinery. I'm very happy with what we start off with. There's plenty to work towards though. And as soon as we do have maybe 180,000 pounds, we'll be able to buy another plot of grass. It's actually all the fields to the west of the farm. I actually could take a tether with us. Let me just see, actually, first of all, let's just check this. Yes, the cows are fine, munching their way through the hay. That's all looking great. Uh, yeah, so we're going to work towards buying this plot here eventually. 137,000. Today, though, we're going to be working over here. I think we'll do this field here. 58 and 59. Uh, that's the water crossing there. And yeah, 36 will have to be fertilised as well next time. But yeah, I've just checked the prices for grass and hay. And I didn't actually know before, but where the price for grass peaks is actually where the price for hay peaks bottoms out basically <laughs> it's the worst price so the worst price you can get for hay is the best price that you can get for grass so it is worth doing this um, well even more so if we did silage I'm not sure if the trailed silage wrapper is compatible with the baler that we have but if it is maybe it'd be worth doing some wrapped silage bales that would save doing any tedding as well but I sort of need to know for sure I suppose worst comes to the worst we sell grass but yeah the price isn't amazing for it so we'll do this field first and then we'll cross the river and then we'll do that one get two fields done but yeah I think we probably will have the intention of making silage bells we should be able to afford the rental on the wrapper it's pretty muddy around here it's going to be fun crossing there. Yeah, it was pretty wet overnight. Hopefully we can make it across. Luckily we do have a tractor. <laughs> Luckily we're not trying to cross in a car. But I suppose if the worst comes to the worst, we could, um, well, get a tow chain. is hopefully the final pass and then I don't know if I should have a run up or if I should try and creep through the mud I think probably having momentum would be useful that should help us through um, but then we've also got to get the bales out of the field but hopefully we can get through with just the mower first of all there we go finished right 
Well, technically we don't need to fold it, but I will do. I don't want to bang the side of the mower on something. Here goes. The mud crossing. Speed and power. <laughs> yes, it does seem to work. Sometimes. That's brilliant. And we, we sort of skimmed over it. We didn't get too muddy. As I said, though, we are going to have to pull the trailer through there with the bales, so that's going to be pretty fun. So, yeah, I'm going to have the intention of selling silage bales, but if the silage bale wrapper doesn't work uh, with the bales that we have, then, yes, I wouldn't be surprised, and we'll just sell the grass. So that's, that's the way we're going to go. By the end of today, we will have either produced silage or grass bells. Sadly, we can't sell the silage straight away. It will have to ferment, but if we can get it going pretty quickly, then it should be ready to sell in a month or two. Maybe even a month, actually. It, sometimes it is the next month. Right, this field looks a bit unkept on this side. A bit rampant. But it's good to have these two fields cut. We actually do own the next one down as well, I think. But I think one of those, if not both, I'm going to turn into an arable field, eventually. We might put in a different crop type. Maybe something like sunflowers. But that's my first lap done. Let's now go the other way around. Need to get as much as possible. And I will finish the field. Then we can head back, we can get the windrower. And then once that's done, the baler. A lovely view of Corf Castle in front of us. Very beautiful scenery. Okay, right, head back up. And then we're done. It is those two fields there that we own. Uh, that one actually behind us seems to have like a big, big dip in the middle of it. Um, I guess it won't be quite as obvious when we're actually in that field. I was going to cultivate that field after mowing it um, but maybe it's not the best one for arable certainly that one over there on the left hand side let me just show you quickly on here yes yeah, so that's the one with this sort of dip sort of here this one here is fantastic for arable work actually it's a fantastic one for planting maize in next year maybe we could put a cover crop in it for the rest of this year after we've taken the uh, the grass off it but that will do for the mowing today. It's nice just to stagger it. We don't want to do it all in one go. And yes, we're going to have to get out of here. So, speed and power once again. We're through. Uh, not quite as much of a run-up that time. But I still made it. Although it has splatted the mower, unfortunately. We will have to get a pressure washer as soon as we have the money or even just the hose pipe actually we could plug a hose pipe in I think it might still cost us well it would certainly cost to install it I'm going to use this same tractor on the windrower but I'm going to put the class tractor on the baler the class baler
you wouldn't want to meet a car or another tractor on a road like this. And the roads really are like this in Dorset. I know this area very well in real life. There's some very <laughs> narrow roads. Very pretty though. Okay, here we are. Yeah, luckily the traffic sticks on the main roads on this map. Although it would be fun. Although it probably would get a bit tiring. Because the traffic would never give way for us. There we go. Right. So the Windra is just over here. We'll get it attached. And I'll see you over at the field. Brilliant. Now this probably is going to be a bit trickier to get through the mud. As the mower was mounted on the three-point linkage, so it was it had no resistance obviously on the ground. But this has wheels. So this is probably going to sink into the mud. So we'll do this field first before we uh, run the risk of getting completely stuck. It's going to happen. But I wouldn't really expect it until, yeah, the bale trailer. The mud, which is part of the mud system mod, is very sticky mud. It's easy to get stuck in it. I think actually we did well with the mower. It's a nice swath. have the first field finished. These little bits I'll have to get with the baler. Uh, okay, hope for the best. Very good. This is a good tractor. Obviously it has some very good wheels on it. And now we can repeat the process with this field. Yeah, I don't really want to cultivate these two fields up. These are perfect for grass. And getting a combine through that muddy area is going to be quite tricky. Although it won't always be muddy. It'll probably dry up in the summertime. But still, narrow gates. Not ideal. That field there is just perfect. I can't really decide about that field with the big dip. Probably should stay as grass. And we are off. So it has converted that bit of hay that was in the baler into grass. It would be really nice if we can turn this to silage. They are, I think, a more unusual size though. These are 6,000 litre bales. So yeah, I, I'm not really expecting the uh, wrapper to work with them. But if it does, lovely. Because at the end of the day, um, if it doesn't work, if they won't wrap, 
then we can sell just grass bales today and still make quite a bit of money. And I must say, it's nice not to have a round baler. I love that we can just keep going. We don't have to keep stopping. They can keep flying out the back. Although by the look of it, none have flown out yet. Uh, but yes, that's because they're all sort of still within the baler. There should be quite a few in the end. Oh, this would be quite difficult to pull through the mud. But then we do have more power. And this tractor's wheels are really big and chunky. Oh, bale in the road. <laughs> Should avoid that. There we go. Yeah, we've got more out of this field than what it appears. Because there's like three bales, probably. Uh, in the bale level, two and a half. I reckon that next field is going to have a lot of bales in it. So that's both the fields done. I'm actually going to unload the baler here because then we don't have to go all the way back to the field to test the wrapper. So we can test it on that bale. Can now fold this up. Actually, yeah, we'll put this back in the shed. So here we are back at the store. Yeah, I've not used this bell wrapper for quite some time. It's going to have to be this one, I guess. Although, there are these new ones. That one. Potentially. Yeah, I don't know what our size is, because it was just like a standard for that baler. It's going to be interesting to give it a go. That can only do up to 180 centimeters square, though. And this seems to have a very good range. So I think we'll go with this. I, I just don't know <laughs> what's going to happen though. 2754. Well, I guess if it doesn't work, we can get a refund on the rental. But we do have a, a decent amount of bales there. So if we can produce silage, then we'll make a lot of money. And for anybody saying you have loads of silage pits, why don't you just use the silage pits? Well, I'm going to use them for the maze. This is to keep it a bit different. And also, we'd have to have a forage wagon. And I think with the amount of loose material we'd have to cart, I'd want to have a fairly decent sized one, like a medium sized one. And that, I would imagine, would be quite expensive. Probably, probably three and a half thousand pounds to rent. And it's a long way to cart. It would soon add up. And if this does work, I might keep this for the next episode, and then we can make even more in the next fields. Okay then, in we go. Let's unfold this. And we'll see if it says incompatible, or if it just does it. Oh, very nice. I wonder if it's uh, converted it to something, though. Has it reduced the capacity? I hope it hasn't. I don't see why it would. I think it'll work fine. But before I do a full field of them, I will of course check. That would be the wise thing to do. So it should be a 6,000 litre silage bell. Well, grass bell. And that's exactly what it is. Fermenting, looking absolutely brilliant. So let's go and do the rest of it.
Yeah, this is going to pay off. This is going to be great. And we have that pad there where we have the cultivator, where we could store them whilst they're fermenting. I'm never going to turn right. I'm going to have to back up. There we go. Uh, yeah, I don't know how many we have in total. We can actually check. 16. 16 bells to wrap. And if we can do even more in the next episode, then that is even better. Because the daily sort of overnight fee shouldn't be too high for this. It's better than returning it and renting it again in the future. Only three in this field? Hmm. Well, we have many in the other field. 13. Oh, well, 12 probably. I took one back. Uh, do we have automatic drop for this? Yes, we do. That'll make it faster. So let's get all of these done. And then... Well, I'm trying to crash into them. And then, yes, I can bring the tractor and front loader with the trailer across. And we can get them taken back. And I really want to have it on the new Holland because that's the tractor with the front loader. But then I don't know if I'm going to get stuck. It's probably inevitable. This tractor does a pretty good job though at not getting stuck. This has always been one of my favourite fields on the map. I don't really know why. I suppose it is the water crossing. But it's tucked out of the way. It's a nice field. Oh, and it's got wildlife in it. Not that we had wildlife in FS15, but yeah, it's still nice. Run, dear. I'll try not to scare it. I think I'm going to keep this here because we need to have it in the next field next time. We'll just bring the new Holland across with the trailer. And if I'm not mistaken, this is the final bale. Lovely. Looking good. Great. So we'll fold that up. We'll put it just over here. And we'll get this set up. Well, we actually are set up. We just need the trailer. And I'm going to have to put the weight probably on the front because we can't attach the weight to the trailer. I've tried before. It just attaches to the underside of the. Well, to the hitch on the tractor, which is no good. I'm going to have to take the weight off the front, obviously. But I can't do that until I've taken the trailer off, so I'm going to have to do it over here first, I think, and then we'll come back for those other two. I just put the trailer here, at the top of this little hill, that should be a good position. And there we go, we're all balanced again. So I'm not going to stack as high as I did in the previous episode, that was a bit too much. Five high I think I went. Uh, this time, well three. Three would be about right for the trailer. I suppose four to push. But ideally three. And oh yeah, these are heavy. These are much heavier than the hay bales. For obvious reasons, because it's not dried out. It's a heavy crop. Uh, so actually, three might even be too much. I would say it is. 
but I'll give it a go. Oh, joy. Yeah, three's too much. It was obvious. We'll do it two. Two seems good. But yeah, very, very heavy. In fact, must be the heaviest bale that you can get. Because straw is dry, hay is dry. But this is just basically wet grass. Well, it's grass, juicy grass. Not wet, but juicy. Not looking bad at all. Now for our final two, well, final two in this field. As I said, there's no point adding extra weight to the trailer by putting the other two on. We'll get them once we've crossed the river, if we cross the river. Uh, you never know, although we don't really have the best tires for, or maybe these are better tires. But one thing I'm very surprised about is how heavy these bells do seem to be out of thought with a one point this is 600 kilogram and a, and a 900 kilogram. Wow, is it with 1.5 tons on? And wheel weights. I'm amazed it's finding two silage bells so heavy. It must be the bells themselves because in the previous episode I lifted five hay bells and they're only, they only felt a little bit heavier than this. I'm hoping if I put these two on the back as well, it's not going to do a wheelie. Uh, although, yes, it probably will. Maybe I can lift high enough to put them up here. And when I say a wheelie, I mean completely tip over backwards and spill my bales everywhere. Nice. Very nice. Right, we need lots of straps. Anything could happen during this crossing. But one thing which I don't want to happen is for us to lose our bales. Must be heavy. We are going to modify this trailer in the future. And of course, yes, it just has some single wheels on. So they're going to really dig. My foot is to the floor. I can't really pick up too much speed. Okay, we almost did it. We almost did it. I can't go in either direction. Come on. It was going amazingly well. I didn't think I'd get this far. Um, but as I can't go forwards or backwards, let's go and get a tow bar. It wasn't cheap. £700. I could have rented it for probably £20. But... Um, yeah, so I can see it having quite a bit of use on this series. When it rains, when it's actually raining, every field is going to get really muddy too. And I can't control the weather. So it would just be typical if during our forage harvesting, our maize harvest, uh, if it's raining, that would be grim. It would be so muddy. So we need this. Oh no, I've got a tail. Oh, it's wagging. Oh no. Let's see if I can attach this without any problems. I've just had another go with the new Holland. I sort of made some progress, but I did slip back. This should work fine, because I think both tractors drive when you pull. Although, that is heavy. If this tractor, if the pulling tractor was also in mud, I'm not too sure if that would work. Like, if we were in a muddy field where everywhere is muddy, that would be interesting. Yes, I can see we have even more challenging situations ahead with the mud. Great fun. Anyway, that should be far enough out of the mud. 
I don't think we would have done it otherwise though. That would have been a challenge. Oh, that is still quite tricky. Yeah, so maybe actually it would be a good idea to detach that trailer and to put it on this tractor as it's here. I'll leave this tow bar just here for now. I won't forget where it is because I'll recover it next time. But if we can then just put these two on, then I think that will do it for today. Maybe these two can squeeze onto the back. 78,000 litres. Soon to be a bit more. Yeah, there could have been so much worse. I think the mud is going to become more of a challenge in the fields themselves rather than just crossing a, a muddy river. That is probably completely overloaded, that trailer. We are going to have to pay for some bigger, chunkier wheels, probably some, some dual wheels. Um, but yes, as soon as we have the money, we'll do that. So, squeeze them on. Oh no! There we go. Brilliant. Okay, so just to finish off, we'll take this to the uh, that, that pad, and then next time we'll unload. But we've got 90,000 litres. Actually, we've got more than that. We've got 96,000, because there's already one over at the pad. That is pretty incredible, though, uh, for us to have 96,000 litres, almost 100,000 litres of silage to sell in just a couple of months time. That's going to help our bank balance massively. We can spend that money on modifications. Yeah, so we can't turn left into there, so we're going to have to reverse. And then we can drive up there instead. But we'll make a good pile. It would be nice to be able to keep the bales on the trailer, but we, we need the trailer. So unfortunately, we're going to have to unload. But maybe the next load of bales that we do, we can keep on here. That would be good. So there we go. A great place to finish. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. And until next time, see you again very soon. Bye for now.